House Bill 1480. Um, there is a committee sub. If there is no objection, we will use that committee sub as a working draft. Seeing no objection, we will be doing that. Um, so, Representative Fisher, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam bill. Chair. I think yes, that they're going to be getting me the remote because I have just a few slides that I want to show. Yes. And I need the remote, or I can just ask them to advance, whatever's going to work. Okay, thank you. 1380 yes. deals with the new framework uh, from the uh, Advanced Placement U.S. History uh, Standards and uh, Test from the uh, College Board. The uh, new Advanced Placement U.S. History uh, standards and framework have undergone uh, drastic changes. In fact, they've gone from a framework less than 10 pages long to a framework over 140 pages long. Uh, the uh, national and state GOP have both passed resolutions to hold the implementation of this new framework until further study can be done. Now, the alarmed citizens and, and AP history teachers uh, are concerned because the redesign of this new framework uh, trades an emphasis on America's founding principles of constitutional government in favor of robust analysis of gender, racial oppression, class, ethnicity, and the lives of marginalized people. Under the new framework, the emphasis of instruction is on America as a nation of oppressors and exploiters. Now, certainly we all know that we have our blemishes and we wouldn't want to withhold those, but we don't want only our blemishes taught and not have a balanced approach. A push replaces academic freedom with academic justice, meaning students will acquire historical thinking skills that will combat injustice such as racism, sexism, heterosexism, the evils of the rich and the powerful. Oh, there. A major there. change. Okay. I don't know what's going on there. Oh, okay. Um, a major change in the new uh, A push framework actually goes with the time periods. For instance, the 148 years between the founding of Jamestown and the French and Indian War is greatly embellished because the idea is to teach how British imperialism came into America and produced things like slavery and all those kinds of things. One of the biggest problems with A push is what it omits. America is not the city on a hill, as John Winthrop put it in his 1630 sermon. And let me illustrate, so if we can have on the screens, I don't know which screens will show these, but if I can show you just some of the things that are omitted. All right, so uh, you'll just have brief mentioning of the founders because so much time is spent on the interim between Jamestown and French and Indian War. You're not going to be emphasizing things like the battles of Lexington, Bunker Hill, Yorktown, Saratoga. World War I, World War II, most of the major battles, the uh, generals from uh, the Civil War, uh, generals from World War II, the heroes from American history are pretty much omitted. Uh, great events that also were in the process of righting some of our wrongs historically that we all recognize are pretty much omitted. Uh, studies of things like the Holocaust that uh, was a big part of World War II, pretty much omitted. Amazingly, in the numerous gray boxes that are in the standards, I think there's some 91 of those, uh, there's room for people like Chief Little Turtle and uh, the Black Panthers, but there doesn't seem to be any room for people like Martin Luther King or Rosa Parks or the I Have a Dream speech. Uh, American free enterprise as a positive force is pretty much omitted, and the oppression of the poor and the uh, strong oppressing the weak is pretty much what it's about. In, in essence, what we're having here is a new emphasis on what is bad about America. So HB 1380, is asking for the teaching of a balanced truth, to teach our history, not just to make students critical thinkers so that they can write injustices. The presiding Amer anti-American spirit of the whole A-push framework is completely contrary not only to what was formally taught, but to what is also taught in our Oklahoma history standards themselves. So this is the time to stop this. 
Here to discuss this a little further, if I can have permission, is Mrs. Sandy Hodges. Ms. Hodges has 17 years of experience in teaching in Oklahoma. She taught things like U.S. history, U.S. government, world history, geography, economics, Oklahoma history. She was also an AP history teacher. So for just a few seconds here, I'm going to ask Mrs. Hodges if she would to come, and then she's going to introduce the gentleman who was on the video there. Yes, absolutely. And would you do you want to speak from this microphone? You, you may do that if you'd like. Uh, also, yes, and we are allowing 60 seconds for our, is that okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't miss my points. All right. um, I thoroughly enjoyed teaching AP US history. I want to take a minute to explain uh, some of the committee substitute of HB 1380. You can refer to your handout, although it's, I know it's lengthy. I'm referring to page one and two. Uh, first of all, the bill is asking the State Board of Education to review the APUSH new framework to ensure that it does not contradict any of Oklahoma U.S. history standards and also that it complements foundational historical documents mentioned in the bill. It is not asking the State Board to redesign APUSH or its assessments. It does not ask for new funding, or it is not an unfunded mandate. It does not ask for the State Board to come up with a new solution. There are about 3,000 students that took the AP U.S. History test last year for credit. It's asking the State Board, in uh, agreement with some col state colleges and universities, if they can come up with a test that the students could ta take and get credit for. On page two, uh, excuse me, three through eight, the bill is asking to secure Oklahoma's U.S. history education. This is done by including or seconds. organic uh, reliance on foundational documents. The A push framework does not determine uh, does determine instruction and the curriculum. It was not approved by local school boards. It was not approved by the State Board of Education, and we are asking for this to review to happen so that we can ensure that the standards for Oklahoma students is what Oklahoma Board of Education and citizens want. Uh, finally, the legislature, we're asking them to stop funding the I'm college board. I'm sorry, your board. time is up, so if you could finish up real quickly. I would like to introduce to you uh, Larry Krieger. He's been teaching AP US <coughs> history for some 35 years. He is a uh, nationally renowned educator of APUS history, and I'll turn the limited time over to him. Yes, have you allowed him about three minutes? Yes. Is that correct? Okay, all right, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Go ahead. Can you start the timing? Mr. Krieger, uh, go uh, ahead. Can you all hear me? Yes. yes. Yes, we can, Mr. Krieger. Good, good. I can hear you. I can't see you, and unfortunately, I can see myself. Uh, <laughs> With three minutes, I'm going to try and be very succinct. This is really a debate about two very different documents. The Oklahoma Academic Standards for the Social Studies, approved by Oklahoma's duly elected representatives, versus the A-PUSH framework, written by a committee of just nine people, selected by the College Board, a private organization that is accountable to no one. The vision and purposes of the two documents could not be more different. Now, the College Board knows, as you've heard, that there are vast differences between its A-PUSH curriculum and your own Oklahoma standards. One of the earlier speakers listed a number of items that are in your standards which are not in the framework. The list goes on and on from the Dust Bowl to Theodore Roosevelt to Thomas Edison, the Cuban Missile Crisis. It's quite an extensive list of discrepancies. Now, the College Board uh, could have recognized these deficiencies because they exist with other state curriculum. Uh, but instead, they've chosen to create what they call a flexibility doctrine. They grant the teachers the, quote, flexibility to illustrate framework concepts with examples from their own state standards. Now, this sounds reasonable, 
except for the fact that it's actually a beguiling myth. And I hope in the questions that I'll have time to go into greater detail about this. But let me simply say that the very structure of the exam itself undermines the flexibility doctrine and I invite you in a few minutes to ask me some questions so that I can elaborate on just this point. Now, my message to you is clear. The Oklahoma standards are built on the solid foundation of American exceptionalism, a concept that has been deliberately omitted. The College Board framework is built on the shifting sands of revisionist history. I'll be happy to elaborate on that. I urge the members of the Education Committee to support HB 1380 and say no to the College Board's attempt to impose a nationalized curriculum onto Oklahoma's APUSH students. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Representative Fisher. Well, Madam Chairman, I just want to thank you for uh, allowing us to have these uh, two uh, experts share just a little bit. So I would be open for questions, and I'd also maybe have to defer some to uh, Mr. Krieger if I need yes, to. Yes, absolutely. We do have several questions, and I will ask each one whether they're for Representative Fisher or for Dr. Krieger or maybe for Ms. Rogers. Uh, so, Representative Condit, is your question for whom? Doesn't matter to me, whoever wants to answer it. All right, whoever wants <laughs> to you, answer Thank you, Madam Chair. All right. I, uh, first of all, I want to know if you or anyone else that you know of has approached the, school, the State Department of Education at a point just north of here or the state superintendent in reference to this and tried to go through those channels of changing things. Sandy, would you like to address that? I made several attempts and are not getting a response at this time because of all the uh, reorganization over at the State Board. I've been assured that her office, that uh, Ms. Hoffmeister's office is aware of what's going on and they are also looking into how this was implemented and whether or not it was ever actually on the agenda of the State Board and I have yet to get an answer. I'm a 30 year educator, history major. And I very much understand where you're coming from. And I, I see what you're saying. But do you see a possibility of what if some other group or organization gets upset with something taught in AP Science, AP English 2, AP English 3? I feel as if it isn't our job to set curriculum. It's north of here's job to set curriculum. Where are we going to draw the line? I, I thank you for the question, and I completely agree. That's why this bill refers this to the state board. Let me make it clear. We're not trying to tell teachers what they can teach. What we're simply saying is the new framework simply omits so much that the teachers are going to be forced to teach what the students are going to be tested on. And unfortunately, most of the things that you and I would consider vital points of U.S. history will not be covered for sake of time. These teachers have the freedom to add extra information, to teach on other subjects, but you and I both know, I was a school teacher myself. If my students are gonna be tested on certain things, I'm gonna make certain that I teach those because I want them to score high. Unfortunately, that will omit many things because they're just simply not on the test. They're not a part of the framework. So I agree with you. We're not trying to dictate how teachers are gonna teach. We're referring this to the school board saying, school board, do something. I'm talking about the state school board. Do something about this. We would be perfectly fine if we simply use the old a push standards. No one had any problem with those. It's this brand new framework that has a completely, uh, apparently a completely different agenda. That's the issue. All right, representative candidate for a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. And to whom do you direct this, please? Um, representative Fisher, be fine. First of all, does the local school board and district have authority to offer or not offer AP U.S. history? Representative Kent, I believe they do. The problem is we, we do not want AP courses teaching this kind of thing. Follow up. So you're saying that the local board or the local administration is not, has not the integrity to 
disallow this if they find it so? No, sir. What I'm saying is, it's basically, this is the only thing available. The College Board also controls the SAT test. So when we're talking about AP courses, then basically the College Board offers the only option that we have. And what we're suggesting is that the State Board come up with other options. All right. Representative Stone for a question. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, Representative Fisher. In your presentation, you mentioned that College Board's new framework doesn't include Rosa Parks, um, as well as many other things, and that made it uh, anti-American. I've looked through this bill several times. Can you point to me, point out to me where this includes Rosa Parks? I, I am not sure. Where? I don't, I don't think it does necessarily. What, this, what, we're, what the point that we're trying to make here is that why wouldn't an AP framework contain those things? The, the reference to Rosa Parks is not that I believe that you don't have adequate U.S. history if you don't have Rosa Parks in it, but why would we omit those things? Why, why would we put the Black Panthers in and not Martin Luther King? The illustration is it goes to the intent of what has happened in the redesign. All right, Representative McDaniel for a question. Thank you, Madam Chairman. If I heard correctly, and this can go to Representative Fisher, 3, 000, approximately 3,000 high school to, students took the AP U.S. History course last year, but I'm assuming that many, many more went through high school U.S. History and didn't see this test. And, so those who choose to take it are stepping outside the normal, wouldn't you agree, and asking to be part of this, um, this class that's taking the AP test. I mean, it's not, not every kid takes it, certainly. Just those who choose to go AP, is that correct? You are correct, but okay. taxpayers would not want our tax dollars going to, teach, uh, to, to a program that would teach these advanced students who will more than likely be leaders in a few years a skewed version of U.S. history. This being probably the last exposure they'll have to U.S. history will probably mark them much greater at their age and their final exposure to U.S. history than what they've had all the time before. And these are the leaders, and this is supposed to be advanced. Follow up? Yes. Well, with that in mind and with the College Board, our, many of our advanced students do go out of state for university. And so what I wonder, are we taking away their opportunity in U.S. history to clip a class in another university out of state who isn't going to recognize an Oklahoma state test? They're only going to recognize the, the college board test that's offered. So if they go to Stanford or Yale or someplace like that, any place else, I, are we taking away our AP students' opportunity to be able to take that class and clip out or get a score? I appreciate your question. I think the answer to that is no, but there would be nothing to prevent parents from spending their own money if they want to, to take these tests. It's simply we do not want state dollars supporting a program like this that in essence seems to be bent on undermining our, our history as a nation. Representative Kern for a question. Thank you, Madam Chairman. So. Um, the way I understand this, all you're trying to do is to get the State Department of Education to look at the, the new AP, APUSH AP exam and uh, uh, point out to them that here we are in America, uh, uh, the land of the free, the home of the brave, the richest, the most prosperous nation that's ever been, and just make sure that we will be teaching our students, our, our, our posterity, as our founding fathers called them, the history that has made this nation and provided to us all of the benefits that we have, just to make sure that that is done adequately. Is, is this not correct? Exactly. Plus, what they're taught will line up with Oklahoma history standards that already exist. This does not comply with our own standards that we have now in our state. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can I ask, uh, is it Dr. Krieger? Dr. Uh, Krieger? No, it's Professor, it's Professor Krieger. Mr. Krieger, at least just call me Larry. <laughs> All right. L Larry, a question I had, because this, uh, from Representative Fisher's explanation and yours, this is a significant change in focus for uh, this uh, course um, that has happened over the last year or two. Who is in charge of the college board or responsible for this primarily, and where were they before this? 
Well, that's an excellent question. The president of the college board is Mr. David Coleman. So Mr. Coleman, who was also well known as the architect of Common Core, is uh, the person who is ultimately in charge. Now, Mr. Packer is a vice president of the college board, and he has been their spokesperson at numerous states. However, there is actually one person who they haven't sent out, and his name is Dr. Lawrence Charop. Dr. Charop's name is actually listed on the acknowledgement page, page V, Roman numeral five, of the framework, and he's identified as the person who was actually in charge of the process by which they created this document. And curiously, the College Board has never sent him out. He's, he hasn't uh, been present at any state hearings. Uh, we'd like to hear from him. Uh, I personally think it's a good chance he's the person who wrote a lot of this document. Follow-up, yes. And this, this follow-up is for uh, Representative Fisher. Uh, Representative Fisher, I know there's some real challenges with, as Representative McDaniel said, uh, the, the practical application of if our students don't have the opportunity for this AP, how does that affect them on a college basis, those kind of things moving forward. I sense that what you're worried about is the cultural or worldview change this creates within our country, would I be correct in that? Yes, you are correct, but, but I would also have equal concerns for our students being able to pass college entrance exams, but I am also convinced that there could be very, numerous other options, and I, I think that our state school board is quite capable of coming up with a process, whether it would be another test, or whether it would be simply putting the pressure on the college board, no one had any problems with the previous framework. You understand that was getting students into college just a year or two ago. It's all of a sudden when we've decided to rewrite this thing and turn America into a completely horrible place. And oh yes, you can say the good things, but you're gonna to have to really focus on this. I hope that answers your question. To follow up on this question, could we ask a question of someone from the State Board of Education? Is there someone here from the State Board? Representative Cudi, Kelly Kurtwright, Social Studies Director, yes, thank, yes, you. thank you. Um, in my 12, almost 12 years at the department, uh, no we haven't. We vote on things like the grants, the expenditures of the monies, things like that. Who decides whether a, an a, what AP tests are going to be taught at a school? At a dist in a district that comes down to the local district adopting in their uh, for their own curriculum their own curriculum and instruction uh, right. what programs they want in or not we have a couple schools that do international baccalaureate that are an advanced studies type program uh, and most of our schools that have any advanced studies are uh, the advanced placement programs with the college board all right thank you very much I see that did you uh, you're less, who was just speaking? Who was just speaking, asking? Oh, all right, Todd Thompson, okay. All right, so we're going to go back now because we've heard from some of these other people and we hear, hear from you in a minute, but Dennis Casey, I don't believe you ever got to ask your question. All right, would you please ask it? Okay, and, and that might come with the State Department or it might be with Representative Fisher. Uh, currently, what are we doing? In other words, is there a time frame that allows this to be well vetted out and make decisions where the kids aren't hurt, hurt or are we already making that adjustment? So if I'm in AP history right now, what, what AP test am I gonna take? If I, understand, if I understand correctly, the new one. Follow up? Yes. Uh, so I guess is what I'm saying. So since August, they've been teaching this curriculum. Is that, is that what you're saying? I, I would assume so, yes. Is there a way that we know versus assuming? Uh, I asked the uh, State Department of Ed if they were indeed teaching the new one, and I was told that they were. Okay. Because if I may follow up, I, I, have, uh, um, I have requested the Attorney General to look at this, to make a ruling to see if it, uh, teaching this new AP uh, goes against uh, what uh, we did last year in the bill to repeal Common Core, where we said we would not teach uh, anything that was 
in a sense, mandated or given to us outside of our own state. And so uh, I haven't heard a response from them yet, but, but I did ask that, and I asked about are we doing the new one, and was told yes. So I, I have another question if, when it's my turn. Yes, sir. You're through? All right, then I believe the next one is Shane No, no, I'm sorry. Representative Candidate. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I think I'll uh, send this one to uh, Mr. Krieger. Yes. Oh, I think he's gone. Okay, I'll... He's still, he's still here. He's still here. Oh, yes. Can hear. He's still here? Okay, we just can't see you. Speak right. up, though, so I can hear okay, you. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's look back at the Articles of Confederation as part of our history and the focus there on local control. If we pass this bill, will we not be violating one of the fundamental principles of democracy, and that is local control, that is the most local, and that is the school board, local school board? Yes, uh, this is an encroachment on the 10th Amendment of the Constitution, which clearly leaves any powers not specifically stated in the Constitution to the states, and historically, one of those powers has been control over education. And as I said before, the College Board is an unelected private organization with revenues reported two years ago of over $850 million, probably approaching a billion dollars right now. They're unelected, unaccountable. If the states and their duly elected representatives do not speak up, then what we will have here is a nationalized curriculum. So someone, states have got to speak up to prevent this encroachment on, uh, on the Constitution. Follow up, Representative Kennedy. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Larry, I guess the point I'm struggling with with your answer is, as a former school board member, I always felt like that was the most intense and direct form of democracy. Are you saying a local elected school board is not an example of democracy? I, I'm sorry, I, I can't hear your question. Do you want me to try speak again? directly into that mic and he okay. should be able to hear it. Larry, here's the question. Fundamental democracy that this country was founded on and that I served three and a half years in the infantry for is local control. Is that not correct? Absolutely. Thank you. Then is not the ultimate local control the local school board deciding whether or not to offer AP U.S. history? And are you wanting the state to take that away from them? The, it depends upon the states. You see, some states have local control where the state school board doesn't uh, actually have much control over the local school districts. In other states, such as Texas, the state school board does have a lot of influence. I'm not sure you'll have to tell me in Oklahoma. My basic point, however, is, is that the new APUSH framework represents a curricular coup which is circumventing state control over curriculum. Follow up. And I might then, I'll try to word it into a question, and that is, as my experience as a school board member, the superintendent brought to us the curriculum that we approved or disapproved. And yes, the state could override it based on state mandates, but am I correct that the state does not mandate AP U.S. history? <clears throat> the state does mandate, like all the other 49 states, U.S. history. And you do have a state-mandated Oklahoma standards. And these standards are not being fully implemented. They're not fully aligned with the new APUSH curriculum. There is a big discrepancy. We pointed that out. And so that discrepancy has got to be closed. Madam Chair, if I could yes, also address this. You, We're not suggesting that a local school board can't teach the AP if they choose to, but we don't want state dollars going to do it. 
this does not comply with state standards. So we don't want to fund with state money things that do not comply with state standards. If they want to use their own money to do it, if the parents want to use their own money, by all means, I'm, I'm with you on the local control. But I do not want state tax dollars supporting a program like this that no longer complies with state standards. Right, That's the you. purpose of the bill. Thank you. Let me jump in and, right. and say that the process by which this framework was created was not very inclusive. To the best of my knowledge, no local state no local school boards were consulted on this framework. Citizens weren't consulted on this framework. And that's why there's been such pushback, because various constituencies were never consulted. All right. Uh, to further answer this question and to qualify what Mr. Krieger just said, we do have <coughs> some representatives from College Board who I'm going to allow four minutes in just a little bit. But to answer that question, uh, did the College Board consult with the, with the uh, did you say the local boards or with the state board, Mr. Krieger? Actually both. All right. I'm, I just want to ask the College Board, some College Board representative, did the College Board consult with either the state school, a state school board, or some school, state school boards, or some local school boards on the curriculum for the uh, AP history course, American history course? Uh, my name is John Williamson. I'm the executive director of- A brief answer. <laughs> of course, development at the College Board. Um, the College Board actually brings together uh, high school AP teachers who represent um, school boards and states across the country, as well as college and university professors to develop those uh, curriculum frameworks. And then they're also vetted with uh, college and university department chairs. This is a college and university credit bearing course. Therefore, it has to meet the standards that they deem necessary to award credit and placement if you want it to count for college credit. Thank you very much, and thank you for being brief. I appreciate that. Now we're going to go to Representative Stone for a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Representative Fisher, uh, does the State Board of Education currently lack the ability to review uh, this framework? They do not, but it is already in place. It's already being done. And my question is, why change it to begin with? What was wrong with what we had before? What, what is driving the change? And as Mrs. Hodges has already testified, uh, they've not even looked at it yet. To my knowledge also, now there may have been, but to my knowledge, no Oklahoma uh, uh, persons were asked to be in this evaluation, this design. And yet, we're going to be doing it here in Oklahoma. All right. Thank you. And before we go oh, to, your, oh. to your question, I, I want to explain that College Board will be given some time in just a few minutes to answer some of these questions and to explain what this is all about from their point of view. So, Representative Stone for another question. Thank you, Madam Chair. If, if the State Board of Education already has the authority to review this, and your explanation of your bill was that we're giving them the authority to review it, then what does your bill actually right. do? If Excuse me, if I did say that, then I misspoke. What I said is we're calling upon them to delay it, to stop it, and to not allocate state funds to it until we figure out why the change was made and to make certain that it complies with state standards, which I can tell you it doesn't. So that's the reason for the bill. All right, thank you. Representative Strong for a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Representative Fisher. Um, I've had two children successfully go through the AP US history uh, a number of years ago at the Jenks School, uh, through the Jenks School system, and uh, was, was pleased with, the, with their understanding of AP US history. Um, my question is, is this bill really intended to make sure that our students who are still in high school get a firm understanding and grasp of the ideas that made this country great? Certainly, that's the purpose of U.S. history. That's the purpose of American education. Yes. Yes, follow up. 
So is it, as a parent and someone who loves our country and understands the importance of our founding documents, do we feel that as a body, as members of a legislative body, do we feel that, I guess my question to you is, do you feel that we're not saying that they can't, let me rephrase my question. This bill does not preclude anyone from taking the AP US history. It is just guaranteeing that they are educated in a min minimum set of foundational documents. Is that correct? Certainly, and here's the thing. We're not suggesting that we eliminate the, the blemishes on our own history. We're all very familiar with the fact that America is not a perfect uh, country and has not been. So no one is suggesting that we want to sterilize or censor our history, but that's basically what has been done in this framework, but to the opposite. We're basically censoring most of the good and simply lifting high all of the bad. Follow up. Thank you. My last question. So to that point then, is it safe to say from your perspective that what motivated this bill is an understanding that American exceptionalism is recognizing our flaws but rising above them? Which is pretty much our history, yes. Thank you. Thank you. And Representative Kern for a question. Finally, Representative Kern. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I appreciate it. <clears throat> um, Larry, uh, if yeah. you're still there, a while ago you were asked a question about, uh, it was Representative Kennedy asked the question, uh, will we not be violating the principles of democracy if we uh, take the local districts out of this? Uh, would you not agree that um, if we allow an APUSH course to be taught that in a sense demonizes America, then we are doing a, a greater, I'm all for local control, but would we not be doing a greater uh, harm to the very foundation of our republic uh, in allowing future generations to be taught that uh, only what is bad about America? Would you not agree with that? I totally 100% agree with that. Can I have a follow-up? Follow up. <clears throat> and this, this is a follow-up, I guess, to uh, Representative uh, Fisher over there um, from what uh, Mr. Kurtwright said a while ago and, uh, and I, I wrote it down you did say that it comes down to the local district choosing is the, the AP class, is this not correct? That's what I understand House Bill 3399 made it clear last year that mm -hmm. local, the curriculum falls on the purview of the local Board of Education Okay, uh, I, I agree with that. Um, what he said was he believes it does fall on the purview of the, the local district. I agree with that. My, my question <coughs> is to Representative Fisher, would you not agree that uh, there could be a great many members of our local school boards out there who don't have a, who don't understand, who are not aware of what this new A push is doing, and if they did, they would push back on it? I, I completely agree, and in fact, before the interim study this summer, I was completely unaware of this change. So I can tell you that the average citizen, I've talked with numerous citizens about this, but I had to bring up the subject because they didn't know. And when I asked them, did you know, of course their jaw drops open and they said, what? So yes, I would tell you that the majority of citizens out there don't even know that this change has even occurred. Representative Casey for a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a point of clarification, Representative. Uh, did you say that no state money should go to an entity that does not comply with state standards? I, I think that's what I said, yes. Thank you. And Representative McDaniel for a question. All right, she waves. All right, since that is the last questioner on this phase of this presentation, uh, I did promise college board representatives that they would have an equal amount of time to present. And so because uh, Representative Fisher's guests had four minutes, we're going to give college board up to four minutes. And you may do that with one, we may do that with one presenter or more as long as you stay within the four minutes. Now following that, I'd like for all of you to present what you want to present. Following that, we will give opportunity to our members to question you. 
I realize that we're taking a long time to do this, but I feel that it is extremely important, and that's why we're taking this time to do this. So, sir, tell us your name again, please. Okay. Again, my name is John Williamson. I'm the Executive Director for Curriculum Development at the College Board. Uh, prior to coming to the College Board three years ago, I was a school district superintendent and a high school AP teacher myself. Um, I have to say that if I believed or had heard some of the things that you are hearing, I would not want this course taught either. The fact of the matter is that much of this and is just mythology and just not true. Um, and I wish I had more than four minutes to explain every possible uh, issue to you uh, and address every one of uh, Mr. Krieger's concerns uh, and Representative Fisher's concerns. But what I will tell you is that the Advanced Placement U.S. History uh, course revision is part of an ongoing revision process at the College Board. It was not, U.S. History was not targeted to be revised. It was just part of the natural cycle of courses that are up for revision. Um, while there were no Oklahoma teachers on this particular revision, in our AP English, there are Oklahoma teachers on the course revision. We use representatives from across all the, from the, across the country, from colleges and universities and, and high schools, to represent different subjects. What I will tell you, though, that the revision comes about because what we know is that we need colleges to continue to give credit, college credit, and or placement for these courses if you want high school students to be engaged in rigorous college-level coursework while they're in high school. If that's going to be the case, then those courses have to maintain the standards of what's expected in college and university courses across the country in order to ensure that credit and placement. This particular framework was released in October 2012. And I say that because that's before uh, David Coleman came to the College Board. Uh, the, the, the AP frameworks reflect college level expectations. Um, Dr. Krieger, or Mr. Krieger suggested that maybe the course framework was written by one of our employees. That's simply not the case. The College Board is a membership organization. It is comprised of, of school districts, high schools that are members, as well as colleges and universities. And those folks actually come together representatively uh, to write curriculum frameworks. What I also need to tell you is that this document that was released in 2012 the curriculum framework for AP U.S. History, the revised, um, revised description, is just that. It's a curriculum framework. It is not a curriculum, all right? That is by design. For the same reason that you expressed earlier, we leave local control to local states, local school districts to determine the curriculum that is used to populate the curriculum framework. So the, this curriculum framework contains learning objectives. And instead of a 10-page topic outline that just lists topic after topic after topic that teachers were to teach in the past, and we had lots of uh, confusion and uh, unclarity from teachers because they weren't certain what to teach. They raced through American history, um, trying to go as fast as they could to cover everything possible that could be on a, a college board AP exam. This curriculum framework uses uh, seven or eight pages to specify specific learning objectives that students have to do. And I'd like to read one of them to you just to illustrate the flexibility. All right, I'll do my best. Uh, and this says, uh, explain how civil rights activism in the 20th century affected the growth of African American and other identity based political and social movements. And what we allow then teachers, local school districts, states to determine what examples they will use to teach that particular uh, learning objective. So a state could use Rosa Parks or a state might use someone else to teach that, that particular standard. So we do not specify the particular laundry list of topics that teachers have to do. The exam would then allow students the flexibility to offer examples that they had been taught to demonstrate their understanding of that concept of, of civil rights. Sally Kern for a question. Thank you. Ann Cootie. Um, I guess this is going to be an example of he said, she said, because uh, I've had uh, uh, just a few months ago uh, in, a, in a workshop uh, looked at uh, the hundred and some odd pages and saw some of the very things that Mr. Fisher, Representative Fisher is saying is being taught 
uh, I saw them with, with my own eyes. So, um, you know, I just, uh, uh, would you believe that? In a workshop or in a classroom? I saw it in a in a uh, in a in a workshop. We mm -hmm. were dis we were discussing the new uh, A push, and uh, saw the different uh, uh, guidelines and things that were to be uh, addressed in it. And uh, and I had the privilege of teaching for close to 20 years, and in five or six of those years teaching AP AP government. So I I know about AP classes. Right. And. Uh, uh, you know, I know that, that they don't specify a laundry list, as you put it, but nevertheless, they do mention certain uh, uh, major events and things of, of history mm -hmm. to be sure and, and cover in, in, a, in a various ways that the teacher has the liberty to do. And uh, I saw uh, some of these things that are un-American, anti-American in uh, the material. And so, uh, I just, uh, I guess the thing that I'm struggling with, and I'll close with this, is why in the world would we as Americans have a problem with a bill that is going to just ask our State Department of Education to look over this new format and try to determine, is this something that we want our posterity to learn about our country? Can I respond? Yes, yeah, so uh, I have two, two responses there. First, it, our, our workshops are led by uh, AP teachers throughout the country, and I'm not certain what you saw in a workshop because I'm not certain what examples they were using to illustrate in that particular uh, workshop. The learning objectives in here are what are our targets of assessment on the AP exam. Second, um, I agree with you about the principles of American exceptionalism, and I can provide with you page after page of where the concept of American exceptionalism is taught in the curriculum framework. I can read them here if I have, if you allow me the time. But those concepts are reinforced over and over and over throughout the framework. So to say that they're not there is just not true. Now what I will say is I tried to do an alignment to, um, to these, these learning standards, learning objectives in our curriculum framework with your state uh, framework for high school U.S. history. But your high school course starts after the Civil War. So none of those founding principles that are even suggested in the bill could even be taught in your own high school U.S. history course. They would have a better chance of being taught in the advanced placement U.S. history course because we do go all the way back in that course and cover the founding principles and the founding, founding of America. So uh, I don't know how, you know, we would certainly support all of the uh, the College Board would support all of the documents and examples that are required in your legislation, Dr. Fisher, because we know that teachers can populate those examples, those texts, those examples that you want in your state into this framework, into these learning objectives. That's, what we, that's the reason we designed it that way, so that you could do that. Can I jump in and ask a question? Yes. Good. Uh, Mr. Williamson. Yes. Uh, my question is, as you know, American exceptionalism was specifically stated in the old topic outline and was obviously intentionally deleted under the heading American identity in the new framework. So what I'd like to know is, why was American exceptionalism as a term deleted and a simple solution? Since you, Mr. Packer, and all the other College Board spokespeople claim to uh, accept American exceptionalism, why hasn't it been put back in the framework? So the answer to your question is that in, rather than mention the term in the, the course description prior, ask students to study the concept of American exceptionalism. The new uh, curriculum framework actually illustrates examples of it. And so that's the reason it was just a switch from using the term to using examples of it. However, um, we are opening the curriculum framework be, uh, up for public comment, and I'm, and I'm not, not here to say it will or won't be included because we'll bring it back to the committee. But the, um, the whole idea was to illustrate American exceptionalism rather than just to mention the term. Thank you. Representative Strong. Um, thank you, Mr. Greer. Um, my question is, uh, 
You mentioned uh, a couple of times that the framework could be, uh, could have material added that particular states deem as important. Uh, do those changes, are those changes reflected in the actual test that the students take? Yes, the test actually asks students to draw upon the examples that they learned to illustrate a concept. So while the concepts that, that I mentioned, like the civil rights movement, would have to be covered, the examples that you choose to illustrate that with in your classroom or your state would be completely up to the local, uh, local teacher or district to make that decision. So if I'm understanding you correctly, then on a state-by-state -state basis, the test would be different the APS history, history test would be different from state to t state to state based on that local m material? No. Or did I misunderstand? N well, I don't know that you misunderstood. It's just that the exam questions ask students to give examples from what they've learned in class to illustrate a particular principle. So you, it would depend on the examples that were taught in that, in that particular state or local school district that students would bring to the answer for the exam. So the question doesn't change how a student again, would please. respond to that. Yes, sir, you may. Good, thank you. In my opening remarks, I talked about this flexibility doctrine and invited people to ask me to speak about it. So I'm delighted that Mr. Williamson is referring to it. Now, Mr. Williamson, I'd like to ask you, the old exam had a maximum score of 180. Now, for purposes of our questions, can you tell the committee the maximum score on the new exam. In other words, what's a perfect score? How many points? I don't know, uh, Larry. I don't have that right here in front of me. I mean, I can get that for you, but I don't know the Well, the, let the, me the help range. you. The reason why you don't know is because the College Board is yet to tell anybody. But let's just pretend that there are 100 points available on this new test a hundred points to keep it for easy math. Now my question to you is, of those hundred points, in your estimation, how many are up for grabs under this flexibility doctrine? Sixty percent. Okay, sixty percent. Let me help you with that. The test starts off with 55 multiple choice questions. According to your booklet that you gave all the teachers, it says, and I quote, uh, each question, it says that each mu multiple choice item must measure information that is contained in the concept outline, stems and keys, and that's repeated on pages 31, 32, 33, 36, 37 of that booklet. So there are 55 questions worth 40% of the test that are clearly anchored in the framework. Wow, that leaves 60%. Now, according to you, everything else should be open to flexibility, but it's not. Now, 25%- Excuse me, we're, we're getting say, into debate. Uh, and I, I don't think that, that Larry should be speaking on behalf of the assessment. So. I can, I'm happy to speak right. on yes. if there's a certain you question that, that you want us me to answer. We do but need to refrain from debate in our questioning, please. Yes, go ahead. So like there are two that. parts to the exam. One All part right. is multiple choice. The other part is free response. And in the free response section, students are asked to draw upon those examples that I mentioned. In the multiple choice section, students are asked to read primary and secondary sources and ask multiple choice questions about them, uh, anchored in topics that are included in the concept outline, just like I mentioned. Uh, so you could have a, a, a text there from uh, you know, the American Crisis or the City Upon the Hill speech. I mean, all of those are fair game for primary sources that students would be expected to read and analyze on the multiple choice section of the exam. So I'm, uh, I'm not certain what his point is or his question. All right, thank you very much. You know, this is such an important topic that I could just go on all night, but I know that most of you would not like to go on all night. So we have five more in the queue, and I'm going to ask you five, if you would, to just ask one question so that we can move on, though I'm doing this reluctantly. Please understand that. Uh, Representative Nolan, for one question. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Williamson, mm -hmm. my question is, uh, when you did the revision to the test, it was my understanding that in most every year it may be just a few pages. I mean, it's, it's history, so it pretty much stays the same. I mean, we're not changing history. Um, and, and it was my understanding that this year, whenever they, the teachers received the revisions, that it was much thicker. I mean, could you tell me how many pages and how many revisions were made this time? I can tell you that this is the curriculum framework document. I can provide all of you with a copy. It's available on the website. That you can download it. You can see the differences there. What I can tell you is that the targets of assessment for the exam are the learning objectives, which are on seven pages, or maybe it's eight. I think it's seven here. It goes from 21 to 27. Uh, these are the learning objectives that are the targets of assessment for the exam. There is a concept outline in the back that takes teachers chronologically through American history that offers concepts that they uh, share with their students that are up for debate and discussion of which they illustrate with examples that they choose and readings that they choose, sources. Um, what I would also say is that there are gray boxes that were mentioned earlier and it says teachers have the flexibility to use examples such as these, or you can choose others. None of the content in the gray box will be assessed. It's just illustrative. So, um, I mean, that's all I can say about that. The, uh, the reference earlier to Rosa Parks not being mentioned in a gray box, that would be illustrative anyway, but more importantly, Rosa Parks was not mentioned in the prior course description at all. In fact, there are no African Americans mentioned in the prior course description. So if your legislation passes and you want us to go back to, you want your teachers to go back to that, there will be no mention of African Americans in the course. Representative Jordan for a question. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, my question is regarding what has been brought to us today. Um, can you ex can you explain, or do you have any idea why there's a difference between what your program is asking and what Ms. Hodge uh, Hodges testified before us about what she is being asked to teach? From what I understood, and you can clarify if I have a different question, that you were asking the Department of Education to, um, to do a study to see the alignment. And what I'm here to tell you is that all of the topics that are in the legislation that were, that's being considered can be implemented into the curriculum framework and to the learning objectives that are within that the AP uh, College Board program provides. So there's not a disconnect at all. It would fit into that into that course. All right, thank you. Representative McDaniel for a question. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'm trying to figure out how to wrap it all into one here. Thank you for coming, Mr. Williamson. Um, most of the things that were shown that were not taught anymore in this course are things that from kindergarten on through K through 12, basically, kids get different years in different classes. And so my thought is when you get to AP, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's not a point at which you're actually learning history. AP, you're learning to interpret how history has changed lives and how it impacts our future, our lives today. Is, I thought AP was more of an analytical thing, not where you're learning the basic facts of history. Is that right? Well, what I would say, and I don't know about um, this state and how you, you set up local requirements for students in graduation, but our courses, the AP courses, are college-level courses. So the expectation is that students would have had high school foundational course content before they go into a college-level uh, U.S. history course. The second part of your question is exactly the case, that the course focuses on uh, critical thinking and historical thinking skills that are required in college level courses. And those include periodization, contextualization, comparison, interpretation, and argumentation. So the idea is for students to begin reading source documents and formulating interpretations and comparing them, comparing perspectives to, to reach their own conclusions in some ways. Representative Nelson for a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. My question is really kind of going back to the beginning. How much discretion uh, or control uh, does the state board have over the development um, 
or of the process of developing the test or the, the standard framework here because last year we passed legislation that said that the state board shall not enter into any agreement uh, or contract with any uh, private entity which in any way cedes or limits state discretion or control over the process of development, adoption, or revision of subject matter standards and corresponding student assessments. So what discretion or um, uh, does the state board have and what input do they have because this it would it, it's sounding to me like we're clearly in conflict with the legislation passed last year so that I can't speak to uh, but I can speak to the AP course and again it represents college level coursework and college level expectations so that course the AP course is developed by college and university faculty across the country as well as high school AP teachers. And the exams are also developed by those same, um, same parties or groups of people. What I will also say is that the curriculum itself, your local, your state curriculum, can be integrated into the learning standards here. It's not a disconnect as, you've, as has been presented earlier. It, you know, they fit together. Is there anyone who could speak specifically to Representative Nelson's question as to, as to whether uh, this uh, contradicts House Bill 3399? The College Board is the one that determines the test. Uh, the same test is given across the nation. Uh, there is not input from local school districts or local school boards or the state school board. Either you accept what they give you or you don't. And that's why we're asking our state board to please review the new framework. There are things in it that seem troubling. And it is clear in their own documentation that they state anything with outside their framework will not be tested. So a, a teacher can give all the additional information that that teacher wants to, but it's not going to be tested on the, it's not going to be asked on the AP test. They're very clear in that. So we get down to how much time is a teacher going to take to augment their framework if it's not going to be tested on. And the, the individual school boards and the, and the state school boards do not have input. Either you take what the college board gives you or you don't. Thank you very much. I see we've added one more name to our queue, but we're not going to add any more after these two. I'm so sorry, but we've got to stop somewhere. So Representative Stone for a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, Mr. Williamson, you said you had pages full of examples of American exceptionalism. In the interest of time, can you list just maybe two of those? So for example, um, here's a statement that appears in the curriculum framework. America fostered the ideals of liberty and resistance to the corruption of imperial governments. Another one, a few pages later, America was responsible for creating new forms of government and religion strengthened the Americans' understanding of themselves as a chosen people. And a final one, well, there are more than this, but the third one I'll pick here, the United States developed the world's first modern mass democracy. Those are statements that are clearly in the uh, concept outline that students would be taught. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I apologize if you covered this already. I had to step out to another committee meeting, so I apologize if you've already covered this. Can you talk a little bit about um, the board that you put together? You said there was no one um, from the state of Oklahoma that was um, representing um, our interest on that, on that board. Um, can you talk about how you put that together and then how you, um, how you insert, ensure some type of um, ideological balance, for lack of a better term? So the, the committees are comprised of uh, typically eight folks eight uh, college university faculty members representing a variety of tiered institutions throughout the country, uh, and uh, AP teachers who also represent, uh, you know, regional, ethnic, racial, you know, dem demographics across the country. And so that's true for all of our course development, not just uh, AP US history. And like I had said, in this particular course, there were no teachers from Oklahoma in AP English. We do have teachers from Oklahoma. So there are 34 courses, and throughout the course, all 34, we represent this, all the different regions and states and all that sort of thing. I have asked uh, Kim, Ms. Bishop, to make a statement regarding uh, the bill and the law 
if you would, please. Uh, the question about the uh, language in House Bill uh, 3399 last year, uh, it said that the content of all subject matter standards and a corresponding student assessments shall be solely approved and controlled by the state through the State Board of Education. So I guess whether this, uh, if AP is, I don't, my understanding it's not standards, it's more curriculum, but that would be the question. If it was, you know, if it's just curriculum, then that is something that the local school districts have the control over, where the standards are what we said the state sets and we can't see control over. All right, Mr. Williamson, do you want to speak to that? No. To her statement? All right, all right, thank you very much. All right, thank you so much for this discussion and do I hear a motion? Do pass. Do pass, is there a second? second. I hear a second. Will there be debate? All right, I see Representative Condit and Representative Canada. Representative Condit, you are recognized for one minute speaking against Representative Fisher's bill. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, committee. I am in no way against what Representative Fisher is trying to get accomplished. I'm against the process in which this group with Representative Fisher is going about. We have a very capable new state superintendent. Let's give her time to do her job. She's very approachable. I'm on the up opposite party. I called her at eight o'clock Saturday morning and she answered her phone. And she talked to me about this issue and another issue for over, over 30 minutes. And so my response is, let's give them the chance and then, in my opinion, because I don't want to get into curriculum in this committee, in this legislature. I think that's to the building to the north. And so we need to leave that to them and let's let them do their jobs. And then if you go so far and you go through the process and you don't get what you want then, then you come to us. But until then, I think we'll try to let the State Department of Education do their job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Representative Canada for one minute. Thank you, Madam Chair. First of all, I served on one of the local community, I mean the state uh, studies uh, by the college board. So the state does have a voice. As an AP teacher, I attended that. Uh, what I want to do very quickly is give each one of you an AP open, uh, free response question. Discuss the extent to which the strength of a society or a state is measured by its citizens' ability to live with the contradictory policies and actions of its leaders. That's your question. Start writing. But what, we, what we've heard here, we talk about democracy, and our founding fathers based the principles of democracy on local control. And here we're asking that the state take away that local school board, that local superintendent. And if you vote for this, you're voting for doing away with local control. And I hope it's on the record. Thank you. Thank you very much. Representative Fisher will debate for two minutes in favor of the bill. Thank you, Chairman Cootie. Thanks for hearing us and allowing yes. everyone to speak. The College Board has said any teacher who presents the principles of the American Constitution taught in the traditional way would be severely disadvantaging his or her students. When you heard Mr. Williamson speak a while ago about revision, I think the word revision is a key word in this debate because that's exactly what this is. It's revision of American history. The point is teachers can teach what they feel free to teach. We're not trying to tell them what they can or can't teach, but I can tell you this, as a teacher myself at one time, I'm going to teach what's on the exam because I want my students to score well. So I'm going to give that first priority. Now this legislature is charged with the responsibility of ensuring that Oklahoma students through the school board, but ultimately the legislature, receive a proper and factual education. State standards are not state suggestions. They're standards. And we must meet those standards. The exam is a key part of this debate. We have no input in the exam as Mrs. Hodges says, you either take it or you don't. Now, we can teach all kinds of other things, but what is on that exam is the part that probably is the most troubling because those are the things that the students are going to be assessed. You even heard Mr. Williamson said a while ago that you can do those gray boxes all you want. That's just not going to be assessed. But therein lies the problem. Now, we're not the only ones bringing this up. Texas, Tennessee, 
South Carolina, North Carolina, even California are concerned about this and are working to find a solution to the new APUSH framework. So we're not alone in this. There are other states now starting to recognize what is happening. Seconds. And so they are as concerned as we are. If you're as concerned as I am, please vote yes on this bill. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Members, we have heard the questions, the answers, and the debate. Will you please vote? Thank you very much, members. I appreciate so much this discussion. And Representative Fisher, your bill does pass out of this committee with a vote of 11 to 4.